This is Henry Chamberlain. I'm about to speak with Sarah Nisbet, and this is her book, Drawn on the Way, which is a, it's a delightful book. It's, a, it's very unique. It, I feel like I'm there on the subway right to work uh, with you, Sarah. Thanks for doing this interview. Absolutely. It's my pleasure to be here. <laughs> I see some drawings in, in the background. Well, I have drawings too, but you have drawings. Is that a good uh, maybe point of departure? What's that drawing uh, that you've got back there? Yeah, they're sort of they're they're hard to see. I'm like <laughs> want to zoom in my con my computer. Um, the one on the right or the right there is um, it's the three graces, which uh, are in one of my favorite um, sculpture halls in the Met Museum. Oh wow! And, yeah, and I I remember one night uh, going there and I was drawing them. And you know how like sometimes you start a drawing and you're like God, I just I pray that this drawing will finish <laughs> as good as it's starting. Yeah. <laughs> and that was that was one of them. I was just really pleased with how it turned out. It's sort of hard to see uh, there. I'm like, can I bring there? Bring the screen a little closer, maybe. Um, and then the other one is uh, is a collection of um, faces from the subway. That um, so that little guy right there is a collection of faces from the subway, and in the middle it says, "You are a work of art." Um, oh, nice. My, is that my a motto. Is that a print by any chance? It is a print, yeah. Oh, cool. Well, yeah. I'm going to let you, let's begin. Let's say that uh, you had somebody seated next to you. You just did their portrait and they're curious about your book. How would you describe it to somebody? Um, let's see. I would say that this book is a, is a warm invitation to turn your world into a work of art and to, um, to you know, it, it's, it's guidance, so it's tips and tricks and instructions about drawing in the moment, in real time, how to make quick sketches. Um, but it's also a book about living and, and seeing the world differently and finding stories and, um, and sort of turning the background into the foreground. So it's, it's, uh, it's very much a book about drawing, but it's also a book about uh, living and seeing. Well, yeah, I was just looking at the, uh, some of the, uh chapter names or but I guess it's not the chapter name it's like a, a subtext or, or subtitles becoming a visual storyteller how to look how to hook into your drawing contour drawing you've got so many wonderful uh paths people can take to to uh, to discover their own uh, hidden artist that's that's my hope when I when I was um invited to write this book I was very hesitant at first because I, I didn't want to write uh, a book that was gonna kind of tell people, this is how you have to draw. <laughs> um, because as a self-taught artist, I feel like I was able to sort of come into this practice and this um, skill on my own terms. And so the book is very much, um, my, my attempt to just sort of take your hand <laughs> and be like, I've done this a little longer than you have. So let me, let me share some of the things that made this easier for you. Let me share some of the ways that I think about it that changed it from drawing as a way to, you know, make a perfect drawing, uh, which is a very difficult sort of way to enter the process of creativity, but say like, what if we thought about it these other ways that make it a little less intimidating, a little more approachable, like how can we, you know, express a feeling or tell a story or, you know, is this drawing a haiku or a novel? Um, and, and kind of giving people other ways to think about this process so that it's not um, so intimidating. Well, let me see if I can uh, show folks a few pages from the book. Like right here, this is what I'm talking about. It's so accessible. You feel like you're looking at your sketchbook and it's just a lot of fun, very... Uh, user-friendly stuff yeah i hope i'm doing i'm not really doing justice to the book because i'm just sort of leaping through it a little bit but <laughs> i'm i'm trying and that, no this is great it's, it's like I love, <laughs> love the that's awesome and um, then here i i just gotta know what where do i get one of these little guys this little yeah palette. Actually, yeah. oh there That's it nice. is yeah it's super cool it's called a fan pan and um they're awesome. It's it's like a little watercolor kit um, that's already pre-made for you, lots of different colors. And then uh, a couple little like palettes almost where you can mix. 
a little wipe as you can see mine's very well used yeah. <laughs> um and then uh this uh paintbrush which has a little water reservoir which maybe you can see that it's got a little yeah. water in there um oh, and this is awesome. yeah and i i usually draw you know most of my stuff is just in pen but um I, as, as the years went on, I started dabbling with a little color <laughs> and, um, you, you know, I use a marker, or like whatever I've got in the bag, but I, I have to say, I've started carrying this with you because it, it's, it's so portable and you've got just a rainbow with you. So, um, but it's, uh, it's, it's been a game changer. <laughs> well, where would you, uh, where would you get one of those? Um, you can get this. Uh, I got mine at Jerry's Artorama. Um, you can find them on Amazon too. And, uh, yeah, I have links on my, on my social media bios too, to the, to this guy. Cause this is oh, often okay. requested. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, just search fan pan and this should come up. Okay. Perfect. Well, tell us, give us just a little, uh, window into how you kind of stumbled upon, uh, this routine of, of drawing as you're going to work. Yeah. It was totally accidentally. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, this is not, nothing about this project um, and it, the way it's evolved has been really terribly deliberate. Um, I, I was in New York. Uh, I had moved to New York to be an opera singer. So that was my first, first career. <laughs> and um, I was, I'd done that pretty successfully, but the lifestyle just really wasn't for me. Tons of travel, tons of, you know, stress. Um, and so I was in the process of transitioning into a traditional nine to five. Um, and I found myself one night coming home from a temp gig in an office, just like I couldn't stare at a screen one second longer. I didn't want to be on my phone. So I, I remembered I had tucked a little sketchbook in my bag earlier that day because I like to doodle. Um, and I had a stolen office pen <laughs> with me uh, that I kind of dug out of there too. And I thought I would just doodle something. And then nothing came to mind. My mind was just kind of uncharacteristically blank. And so I looked around the train and I, I was just like, maybe something will spark something. And then I saw this guy, like 80 years old, if he was a day, wearing a three-piece brown leisure suit and fedora. And I was just like, he's so interesting. And he's so like New York, you know, he's just like, there's a story. As he was going into the city when everyone else was leaving, it was like, I was like, where is this guy going? What is he up to? You know, who was this person when that suit was like in style? <laughs> um, although he wore it well. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it was, it was I, and I kind of started wondering about him and I started drawing him. And I had never tried to draw anyone before because I was very sure I could not draw people and I could not draw from life. Um, and so it was kind of a surprise to me when I decided to draw this person. And then the, the drawing turned out better than I thought. <laughs> so I was kind of pleasantly surprised. But then more so I was like, oh, the time really passed so quickly. You know, it was this like kind of grim commute and like, I can't believe I'm home already. Um, so uh, the next morning I got on the train and I was like, I'm gonna do that again. And then I, I did it the next afternoon on my commute home and kind of again and again. And, and that's how I learned was just repeating and coming back to this you know, practice of, you know, how quickly can I transcribe what I see um, in this sort of strange studio space of a subway? <laughs> well, people can relate to that right away. I mean, uh, the soul sucking temp job, who hasn't been there or is there right now? And of course, you're trying to find ways like, I'm going to write that novel I've been meaning to write. If I just go, <laughs> I'm going to start writing my novel or, or I'm going to start doing drawings. Yeah. So that, that's just amazing. I, I love to do uh, sketches in museums, J just doing a little sketch of a of something that that just uh, it, it, I don't even know where to begin. I, when I went to the Louvre, I, I saw people uh, doing whole paintings. Yeah. I, I, I actually I saw that many years ago when I went. I think it was like thirty years ago, but I went recently. I didn't see anybody doing paintings. Maybe they don't do that anymore. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> Have you ever seen that? Does somebody do a whole painting in front I'm of a, not, in front of the af actual painting? I'm trying to think. I don't think. Well, I know in the Met, um, they don't actually they don't allow like wet art materials in the Met. I know because I think even technically, don't tell the Met. Uh, I'm not supposed to bring my pen in with me to draw. That's right. That's right. So they may. I I've never seen anyone uh, 
painting there. But I, I have seen people doing, you know, like studies of the work, you know, like, which, which makes so much sense because there's a lot to learn. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I wanted to invite you. I don't know if you're set up quite right to, to try to do a drawing while you're, while you're talking, or do you have a sketchbook that is there, is it like a favorite thing that you like to draw maybe, or? I, I don't know. I was trying to think, I, I have to admit, I'm like, I'm somewhat un, ill prepared for, even though I was like, yeah, let's draw something. I'm like, what should I draw in this room? Oh, um, but it's true. Cause you had a busy day. You're like, you yeah. had a very busy day today. <laughs> I don't I don't have my a fancy second camera set up like you do so I <laughs> I uh I don't know how I would show folks what I was drawing other than maybe you know drawing <laughs> along so I well, may, I I could, may have stacked plans <laughs> I could give you a challenge that you can shoot this out if, if you don't think it'll work but what how about a, a a cat wearing a top hat smoking a cigar is that something that well, you would I, normally draw that is well, I would probably never see that in real life. That, I like that. A, a cat. Okay, I'm gonna write this down so I don't I don't forget this cat in a top hat, right? Yeah. <laughs> a cigar. That's a whole okay. new uh, exercise I just came up with for you. <laughs> I do. I like it. It reminds me. There's an artist I follow, and I forget the. There's like a, she had some funny name of like this weekly challenge she would do with another artist friend of hers. They would just like make like a word salad phrase. Yeah. Like, you know, a, a melancholy turtle riding an elephant through, you know, Ohio. <laughs> and like, they would have to like draw that. And it was just such a great, and she's, you know, this very like serious artist. And so it was great to just like see these little sketches come up that were just totally nonsense. <laughs> it was kind of fascinating. Well, your, your stuff is more uh, uh, like urban sketching, right? Yes. Yeah, my stuff is more urban sketching. So I draw, I, I draw what I see um, as it's, you know, as I'm seeing it in real time. So it's, it's, it's funny because I would say now, you know, starting as a doodler, now I almost exclusively draw from real life. And when I, when I sit down to like draw something that doesn't exist in front of me, that muscle's a lot weaker now. I'm like, oh, how, how does one think of a thing to draw? I'm so used to like getting inspiration from yeah. what I see. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's, it's an interesting challenge. <laughs> yeah. That's maybe that's uh, for the next book. Yes. That would be amazing. That would be, that would be a good, a good book, a book of, I've actually thought about doing a book of um, prompts, just like things that people should draw, you know, to get them to help see, see a story, you know, find somebody who makes you feel sad or makes you feel happy or like, you know, like draw your favorite shoe or something like that. Because mm -hmm. I think, I think people um, probably work harder to find inspiration than they really need to. If you start kind of looking around at the, at the world around you, um, you know, there's, there's a lot that will offer itself up as, as something that's worthy of being drawn. If that makes sense. Now I, I'm curious, you're on like a book tour right now. How's that coming along? It's, it's coming along. Uh, well, I'm starting to do, um, a few more interviews and teaching classes and stuff. And that's been, it's been really fun. It's been fun to sort of talk about the book because it's, it's strange that, you know, you write this thing in, in real isolation in my case, because I wrote it all during COVID. So mm -hmm. <laughs> it was very interesting writing a book about, you know, drawing out in the world <laughs> when you're the, you know, the first, like, you know, five months of writing the book, we were all on like lockdown. So it was like, yeah. Uh, it was interesting, but it, I have to say it was a, you know, it was a good challenge because I really had to kind of, you know, literally take a page out of my own book and, you know, I wasn't going on the subway. I wasn't going out to cafes and restaurants. So I had to really begin to look at my own world and see, you know, you know, what, what does that coffee mug that's like sitting on the breakfast table this morning say to me about this day? What is the story there? What is, you know, yeah, that, you know that reminds me, you mentioned something in, in um, uh... Somewhere in the book, I, I could probably find it if I look hard enough. Um, yeah. I'm talking about how everything has an energy, like a, the yeah. coffee mug. All objects have their own little energy they emit. Yeah, yeah. And that's an idea when I was trying to figure out how to express that in the book. I was like, I kept writing the phrase, objects have feelings. And um, and I was like sharing it with, with a couple of folks who were kind of helping me, you know, give me feedback as I was working on it. They were like, 
they're like, what do you, don't, don't you mean we have feelings about objects? And I'm like, well, yes, but <laughs> hear me out. <laughs> I think that there, you know, that's, you have to imbue your object with, with, with emotion. And, um, you know, I think like, and I write about this in the book, I think it's, it's, you know, I don't know if like a clock has a internal sentience. I don't know if a clock experiences itself or, or really has feelings, but it reflects the feelings that, that we have. So if you're waiting for somebody to come home, a clock can be sad because you're counting the minutes or it can be a, a joyful thing because, you know, five minutes till that person's back here. Um, so, you know, objects, you know, don't necessarily I mean, I sort of think objects do have personalities, um, yeah. but if you're not willing to go that far with me, I would say they definitely reflect, um, you know, the emotions that we feel when we look at them. So, so the practice of kind of studying them and observing them and thinking about them is, is worthwhile because it will, will oftentimes reveal things about ourselves. Yeah, just uh, consider the, the paintings of Van Gogh, like painting his bedroom, it's just objects. That's still life of his room. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think like I think I, I saw somewhere that like Hockney, um, there's like a like a alley of trees that he paints. Like at least for a period of time, he was going and like drawing this same spot every day, and like just sort of tracking the little changes. Or you know, I I would imagine I'm now I'm sort of speaking for him, but. I, I, I love that idea of like even returning to the same physical place where even not a lot is happening, this sort of country road that I think he would draw um, and sort of like finding what you see differently in that space because you're different every day. So it's like, you know, I, I found, you know, like even when I was writing this book, like thinking about some days I look out the window and I'm like, that tree is like so bare and empty and it's so lonely you know <laughs> it's early spring and it's cold and there's no leaves on it and it's so sad and like that would be all I could see and you know maybe the next day I'd be feeling a little bit like higher spirits and would be like oh my gosh there's a cute squirrel in that tree or like you know mm -hmm. or like you know or actually like uh at the base of the tree is like the first like you know flower that's like just starting to come up for spring and so again like it's approaching these objects and sort of noticing how you are feeling and then letting that fill the drawing that you make I think is like very, it's very, very powerful um and very interesting I think well I <laughs> think therapy. I think your your book is a perfect gift for anyone and I just wanted to share a few more pages like compositions underscore connections how true uh and then you've got an exercise on composition and Let's see what else we can. Yeah, it's like a, a, a it's like an ongoing conversation, as is the way I would describe it. With just the, yeah. the most the most fun drawings, the most fun drawings. Thank you. I'm so, I'm so glad to hear it described that way because that is what I really wanted it to be. Like I really I feel like I just wanted it to feel so friendly and approachable because I think you know when I was when I was singing. Uh, and as a professional opera singer, and I would tell people, you know, I'm a singer, the first thing that almost everyone would say is like, oh, I can't sing at all. I'm so, you know, like someone told me, that, you know, to just mouth the words when I was in third grade, you know, and it always made me really sad. And my, my response to them would be like, if you can make sound, you can sing. Yeah. You know, how good you are, whether you should do that professionally is like another question, but it's kind of irrelevant because if, if you get some joy out of doing that then then why shouldn't you do it and that's kind of the same way I feel about art is that I'm self-taught I didn't go to art school um I don't you know claim to have any fancy education um and yet the I get joy every day out of out of these little quick little five minute drawings so and it's it's I feel like I want people to understand that they can have that too well, unless there's something else you wanted to add, uh, I, I think that uh, that covers it. I think, isn't there, uh, uh, did I, I don't think I mentioned this before, you mentioned uh, that uh, you advise folks that st stand back from their work and give it, give it a day or so and then come back and look at it. Isn't that, isn't that somewhere in the book? Yeah, I advise people to, you know, a couple of things, like one of the things that I learned on the subway that was super good about teaching me 
is the limitations of time. So oftentimes, you know, people would be on the train with me for, you know, could be as little as like 30 seconds by the time I started drawing them, right? And then they get off the train. Um, and so what I found is that sometimes I wasn't done with the drawing, but my subject was gone. Yeah. And so it would help me evaluate, like, actually, do, is, maybe this drawing is done. You know, like maybe I didn't need those 10 extra details I thought I was going to add in. And so, so I, I recommend as an exercise for folks to set a timer and sort of artificially recreate that. So, you know, set a timer while you're drawing and then when it goes off, look at it and see, you know, is that drawing maybe actually done? Did you get right to the business of it and draw the salient things that tell that story of that moment? Or is there, you know, oh, actually, I really want to add that one more detail um, and challenge people, yeah, to come, you know, come back and say, you know, maybe even the next day, you know, do I remember that detail still? Could I draw it from memory? Because I think the more you start to look, the faster you almost like absorb these, these snapshots uh, in a way that, that you, you, you might not realize how much you're taking in, but it's a good challenge to sort of to, to test yourself because you're taking it all in. <laughs> Well, I wish you the, the very, very best with this book. Uh, I, I know it's, it's uh, resonating with so many people already. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm so excited for it to be out in the world. And I was, I was glad, glad to hear that it, it feels approachable and it feels friendly because that is truly what I wanted it to, to be for folks. So, All right. Well, thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you.